I find that people are the most surprised whenever I start discussing tower gardens with them and they find out exactly what you can grow in them. A lot of people see pictures of tower gardens or even buy a tower garden thinking that they're really just for greens, you know, lettuce, maybe kale, some spinach. The truth is though, the only limitation of the tower garden is based on its physical capabilities. Meaning you can pretty much grow anything in there that's not gonna get a stem bigger than this or something you're gonna have to pull out like a root vegetable because frankly, you're just not gonna be able to pull something out of this tower garden with a huge root attached to it. You're gonna have, you're gonna have the hand in a pickle jar sort of effect, which always leaves people then naming off their favorite things saying, well, what about cherry tomatoes? What about eggplants? What about squash and zucchini? What about flowers? Can you grow flowers in a tower garden? Can you grow strawberries in a tower garden? The fact is there are two limitations to what you can grow in a tower garden outside of their physical capabilities. First is your imagination, your ability to think, what do I really want to grow in this tower garden? That would be crazy. Second is what else you're growing on your garden. Now, are you gonna be doing a monocrop situation where you're only growing that one particular crop or are you trying to grow a bunch of stuff on your tower garden like I am back here? If you're monocropping, you're gonna find it to be much, much easier to just grow like a tower of kale or a tower of cherry tomatoes or whatever. If you're doing a tower like this, you're gonna find that you have to cater to a lot of plants in the same vat of nutrient water. And that can become a bit tricky. I found monocropping where you're just growing one particular thing in your tower garden to be so much better for your overall crop and what you're going to end up with out of your garden. Seems like most people though, when they buy a tower garden, just buy one and set it up in their home and then try to grow as much as they can of different varieties out of their tower garden. The limitation there you're going to find is going to be the pH and the EC. Let me explain that a little bit. So. In order to grow all 20 or 30 plants in the same nutrient water, we need to make sure that they all like the same pH. Now you can just look this information up on Google. However, make sure you look for in a hydroponic garden because you'll find that soil is gonna be a lot more basic. Hydroponic gardens prefer a little bit more of an acidic pH, right around 6.0, and soil is right around 7.0. So make sure you do include that when you're searching for your plants. The other thing you're gonna have to take into consideration if you're growing a lot of stuff on one tower garden is the EC, the electrical conductivity. This is how many nutrients are in your water. Some plants require very little nutrients. And some plants require a lot more nutrients. And also this will change throughout the plant's life. So you're going to want to check on your flowering plants, your plants that are going to grow fruits alongside your plants that stay in that forever veg state, the plants that you eat the leaves from. Because when you get to the flowering stage with your tomatoes and your cucumbers, squash, zucchini, all the fun stuff, you're going to be turning up the nutrients a lot like double or almost tripling the amount you do during just the vegetative stage. That means that your cabbage and your lettuce, your leafy greens, everything else you're growing is also gonna be getting a lot more nutrients. Not only that, but we change our type of nutrients. Plants, when they're growing their fruits, require a lot less nitrogen and a lot more potassium and phosphorus. However, when plants are growing their leaves in the vegetative stage, they require a lot more nitrogen and less phosphorus. So growing one single garden with all these different types of plants on it can be a lot more complex than just a monocrop garden. And I'm only telling you this information because I assume you're watching this to understand the limitations of a tower garden. Maybe it would be smarter to get a few tower gardens rather than just one tower garden and grow just a couple of your favorite varieties. You know, in hindsight, I have two tower gardens that I'm growing the same stuff, one inside and one outside. I'm actually gonna be picking up a couple more tower gardens just to monocrop them. I wanna do a strawberry tower garden. I've been wanting to do that for years. Uh, I also wanna do a kale tower garden, stuff that, I, that we eat a lot of that I wanna always have, I'm just gonna put in a monocropped tower garden. You can also find a ton of deals at towergarden.com right now. They're offering crazy spring discounts. I think until April 15th, they're offering $100 off for your tower garden. I have links for that down below, so make sure you check those out. Also, if you wanna take all this to the next level, check out Master Your Tower Garden over at Homo Growth Hydroponics, where you also find a bunch of free guides that you can download to get you started. I hope this was helpful to get you set on the right path. Please don't hesitate to ask in the comments down below if there are any questions about any of this. Let's grow together.